everyone. So I figured it might be easier to loom my process of making an Ed Puzzle just so you all can have it. So I just finished making my loom of my text features quiz. So what I had done was I had, I had made this slideshow and basically I just loomed myself reading the questions. So after I made that loom, or if you choose to do Zoom, either or, I downloaded it. So the download is right there. And now I'm gonna go into Ed Puzzle to upload it. So I go to Ed Puzzle. Now the thing is, with Ed Puzzle, sometimes it's easier if you just have your um, video already on your drive. So while Ed Puzzle is loading, I'm gonna go to my drive really quickly. If I can be quick. All right. So videos, Imani. I'm gonna go to this really quickly. Because it's just easier if it's already in the drive because for some reason it uploads more easily this way sometimes and it's good just to have it so yeah so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna drop it in there mm -hmm. it's going to start to upload three minutes left so that should be finishing soon and while that's finishing, I'm going to make sure Ed Puzzle is ready. So, you know, you make sure you're signed in. You're going to go to add content. You're going to upload a video. So, remember, my loom has already been recorded. And now it is already It's finishing the upload. Boom. It's there. So, text feature, show what you know. I'm going to go back to Ed Puzzle. I'm going to Google Drive because it's just there. Sign in under my name. The waiting process is so fun, right? All right, sign in under my name. Cool, so then this comes up. And then I can just search for what I just made. Text feature show what you know, 2.5. Search it. It's there, click it, select. Now, sometimes it uploads right away, sometimes it doesn't. So sometimes you have to do it more than once. Select, there we go. It is currently uploading. All right, so now that the document or the quiz loom has finished uploading, I'm going to click it because now I've got to make it worthy or workable for students. So then the next step I do is I go into the document, which you just saw that I clicked, and I'm going to edit it because it's not finished. Because now what I have to do is I have to go through and watch it and add the appropriate questions. In the Loom, I've already asked the questions, so now I'm just going to add them to the document. Depending on the age of the children and their comprehension, that's what's going to depend on how I do my questions. All right, so it's not a voiceover, it's not a cut, it's just questions. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch the video, and when I have a question, I'm going to put it in. A few things about your question samples. So you can do a note, an open-ended question, or a multiple-choice question. For the note I use this, especially if I have a show what you know or an assessment where the students might need me to repeat the question or maybe I didn't put the question in the slideshow. So then what I'll do is, maybe it's just me reading the book. So then what I'll do is I'll add a note and if I add a note, then I'll type in what I say, but then I'm gonna hit this little microphone and I'm also gonna record myself. So when the student gets to this part, they'll listen to the note first and then the question will pop up after. So a note is not a question. It's just where you can record yourself saying something or you can input an image, anything to like get them ready for answering the question. But because I asked the questions in the video, I'm not going to do a note this time. This time they're mainly going to be multiple choice. So I'm going to watch the video and I might fast forward through some because I just want to get to the questions. Hi everybody, it's Miss Imani here. So what's great what? is you can what's great is that you can fast forward and you can kind of see where everything is. Now, 
this type of quiz works well for second graders and maybe older because they're also used to add puzzle and they're used to this format. I wouldn't start out with something like this because I would want students to get used to it. So I might have it where it's like the note repeats the question again and then they answer it. But this is also another way to do it because like they can see the questions. And this one isn't a read aloud. This is just strictly the assessment or the show what you know. If it were a read aloud, it might look different, but I'm just showing how to do it from how to make an assessment, which is just mainly the assessment. And it's on a book that students have already read or that have, has, has been read to them this week. So this is a book that they're already familiar with and the teaching points have already been taught to them. So I'm gonna fast forward to kind of see, cause I like to talk a lot in these things. Sometimes it lets you, okay, cool. So as you can see where it says question one, I have the questions and I already have the options available. So I'm going to listen to it and then I'm just gonna copy this same question and these same options in a multiple choice format. So it's like a, it's like a direct transfer. Thinking about the text feature heading, thinking about what it is, what is the heading of fish? or survival skills. What is the heading of this page? Predator, diagonal butterfly fish, survival skills. Click on the correct answer. Predator, diagonal butterfly fish, survival skills, and only choose one answer. Which one is the heading? Click on the answer. So I also make sure that when I record the first one, I make a space so that when I put in the multiple choice question, it doesn't cut off my talking. So I always make sure I pause. Then I tell the students what to do. Click on the correct answer. So I'll do that and then I'll hit multiple choice. So then it pauses it for me and I'm just gonna copy over the same question. So what is the heading? of this page and then you want to be very careful that you put the x which what is wrong and then diagonal butterfly fish that is also wrong add another choice and then that is correct so then you see i have x x correct I'm gonna hit save because there's a direct transfer, same question, save. And so now when the student, it shows me what it looks like, when the student goes through, when I say click on the correct answer, the video will stop, this will pop up and then the student can choose the correct answer. So now I'm gonna do this with all the questions throughout this um, show what you know. All right, so I'm on the last one, so let's finish up. Mitch, find the arrow. Did you find it? Right there. The text feature that the arrow is pointing to is a, is that a caption? So is this text feature, is it a caption, a heading, or a label? Is that a caption, a heading, or a label? Click only one answer. So then I go through, same thing, same thing. label no it is not so then I hit save and then I'll hit play all right scholars let me make sure you can see me and all right scholars it. excellent excellent so job hit today finish your teacher because it's done the questions are there if I want to check it I can just click them typically it'll go there the question pops up what is the heading of this page? What is the heading of this page? B, 
beautiful. And then if you want to hit skip, you can just go through. You always want to double check. What is the heading of this page? What is the heading of this page? Hide and seek, camouflage, stonefish, skip. Go through. Which one of these is the label? Which one of these is the label? Boom. If you want to check to see if you're correct, I would say viperfish, submit. It lets you practice as well. Continue. Go through. Text page the arrow is pointing to is a boom, boom, boom. Say I want to check it. Say I want to see what happens if I get it wrong. Submit. Boom. It lets me know that it's wrong. Then if I go here, boom, boom, boom. That is a heading. Submit. Done. Right? So I've checked it. All it right, all makes sense. Beautiful. The next thing to do is to a Assign it. So assign it. I'm going to click assign. Now, it's very important that you make sure that you are logged into all the classrooms if you are the planner. So I am a teacher for 2A, 2B, and 2C. So I can just click all three. Then this is assignment is for Friday the 11th. So I'm going to put that in there. The due date is Friday the 11th. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to hit save. So then it comes on. You want to make sure that it has present skipping because you do not want your students to be able to skip through the questions. So when you prevent skipping, they have to finish the whole thing. I'm gonna also make sure that it posts onto Google Classroom. Then I'm gonna hit assign. Done, so now that part is done. Now